I will be showing you guys how to create this smooth and minimal like button animation for your videos. I've also included a Google Drive link down below with everything you need to create this animation. So without further ado, let's just get right into it. Alrighty, we're gonna start off by naming our project like animation or like Annie for short. Once the project's loaded in, I'm just gonna grab the files and we're just gonna place them right in the import media. I'm just gonna grab the mountain video. It's six minutes long, so it's a bit too long. I'm just gonna cut it down. We only need it for a couple seconds for the like animation. So once you get your background video down, we're gonna go ahead and go and grab the black like button. We're gonna bring it right on top of that previous layer and we're gonna stretch it out to the max. So now we wanna make this image a little smaller and bring it down a bit. So I'm gonna go up into the effects controls. I'm gonna reduce the scale down to 35 press enter and then I'm also going to drag down the position which is the one on the right here all the way down to about here so 921 after we get our like button in position we're just going to have to create that swooshing effect swooshing up so we're going to have to go over to here to the effects control panel and we're going to type in transform should be under here under distort you can either double tap or drag the file right on to the like button and you can see in the left hand side we have our transform layer so to create that first swooping effect i'm going to go around to the two second mark and then we're going to go to the position and we're going to click that for the first keyframe so after you have the first keyframe we're going to go back i'd say about one and a half seconds and then we're also going to drag down the position so we're going to be working from the back to the front so this keyframe is going to be where the animation finishes and then this one is going to be where it starts so we're just going to go here to the right number on the position and we're just going to drag it down until we no longer see that like button so we want to make this a little smoother so we're just going to highlight both of these keyframes i'm going to right click go to temporal and go to Bezier. We're gonna bring down the position with this little arrow here. I'm just gonna scroll in a bit so it's a little easier down here. And then we wanna just click on this left Bezier keyframe. We're gonna bring it down and over, and the same thing with this side, down and over. Play that back quickly. It looks really nice. I'd say it's almost perfect with the speed. So after we get that first swooping effect into frame, we want to add a little more dynamic to it. So we're going to go up to the right hand side over here to the effects and we're going to just type in 3D and then we're going to go down to the perspective and then basic 3D. We're going to just drag that right onto the black like button animation. We're going to change the 3D aspect of the like button. So the first thing we're gonna do is gonna grab our timeline scraper and we're gonna match it to the second keyframe on the position layer. We wanna make sure that the 3D layer and the position layer have the same length between their keyframes. So both the animations start and finish at the same time. And then we're gonna scroll down to our basic 3D layer and create a keyframe. Next, we're gonna move over to the first keyframe on the position layer. We're gonna drag our timeline thing all the way to the first keyframe on the position, make sure it's lined up perfectly we're going to go down to our basic 3d and we're going to change the tilt to 30. so you can also notice that the position is not working anymore so we're going to actually have to switch this basic 3d layer and the transform layer so you can minimize the transform layer and you just want to grab the transform layer and bring it right under the basic 3d tool and then if we play that back there's a little bit of 3D effects. You can barely even see it. So we're actually gonna go into the basic 3D and we're gonna bring this first keyframe up about to the halfway point. And then if we play that back, you can see the 3D actually coming right through. It's a little, a little better in my opinion. Now we're gonna have to create that clicking effect with the like button. So to make that clicking animation, we're gonna go all the way up on our effects controls and we're gonna go to the motion tab. We're gonna click and create a scale and a rotation keyframe and then next we're going to drag it along our timeline i'd say about 20 to 30 seconds from this keyframe to this next keyframe and then we're going to make our scale keyframe we're going to make that 29 and then we're going to change our rotation to four so if we play that back all the way from the start it's a bit too slow here so I'm actually just gonna grab these two keyframes and speed it up a bit. So we're just gonna select both of them then bring them over about half, I'd say. Yep, I say that's good. 
So that's about a 10 second gap between those two keyframes. And then once we create the first part of the clicking animation, we're gonna go to our second keyframes on the scale and rotation layer and make sure they're lined up. And we're gonna go ahead and grab the white like button. So we're gonna grab that and we're gonna drag it right on top of the black like button and make sure that it sticks right here. So when we're on our white like button layer, we're gonna go to scale and we're gonna do 35. And then we're also going to bring our position down to 921 right here. So we're going to change the scale to 29. And then we're also going to change the rotation to 4. So it should match the black button perfectly. Yep, you can see it's perfect. Now we want to create the second part of the click animation. So the first thing we're going to do is select a scale and rotation keyframe. And then we're just going to go about 10 seconds along our time frame. And then we're going to change the scale keyframe to 35. And then we're going to change our rotation to zero. So if we play that back from the very beginning, you can see it's very smooth. You can still kind of see the black like button. So what we're going to have to do is go to the beginning of our white button. We're going to go ahead and grab the razor tool. And then we're just going to cut right here on our black layer. And you can see that it made a little cut right here and right here. We're just going to go right here and then just delete that layer. And now you can see we can bring our white like button down and then it's a seamless transition. Now we're gonna have to make that like button disappear. So the first thing we're gonna do is go to the effects panel and type in transform. We're gonna add this transform to our white like button layer. And then once again, we wanna match up our timeline scraper, this little blue thing here with our previous keyframes of the scale and rotation. Once we have those lined up, we're just going to go down, scroll down to the transform layer, and we're going to select a position keyframe. So this time we're going to be working from the beginning of the animation to the end of the animation. So once you create that first keyframe, we're going to go along our timeline, I'd say about four or five seconds, and we're going to raise this position by a little bit, just a tad bit, 165 should be good. We're going to go five frames over, so you can just use your arrow key. And then we're not going to change any of the dimensions. We're just going to create another keyframe. That means this keyframe and this keyframe are the exact same. And then we're going to go along our timeline a little bit more and make that light button just disappear from the frame. So if we play that back, it's a little too quick for my liking, but for now we're just going to make them smooth and then we can change the keyframes later. I'm just going to select all the keyframes, go to temporal and Bezier. We're going to open the position layer and then just scroll in so it's a little easier for you guys to see and then we're going to do the same steps as before select this keyframe down and over over this one go down and over for these two we're just going to go down and for this one we're going to go down and for the other side we're going to go down and over and then for this final one, we're going to go down and over. So if we play that back, it's way too quick. You can see if we play the whole thing back, it's going to be way too quick for everything else. So the first thing we're going to do is select the last three key layers and we're going to drag it out a bit. And now we're going to make that last little animation a little slower because it's way too quick in my opinion. So we're just going to drag the final keyframe out. So if we play that back, looks a little too slow. We're just gonna drag this up a little more, about 1,122. All right, I think that looks really good. Now it is lacking some uh, motion blur. So we're just gonna go to the transform layer for the white like button. We're gonna go down and select the shutter angle to 360 and make sure you click this button off. And then we're also going to do the exact same thing for the black like button. We're going to go to the transform. If it's closed, you just got to open it. That arrow. And then we're going to go all the way down to shutter angle. Crank that up to 360 and turn this button off. So if we play this back. It's a very smooth and clean animation, I'd say. Now I think it's time to create those dispersing dots once that like animation is clicked. So I've also included this in the Google Drive. It's just the dot image right here. So we're just gonna double click on this in our media browser. And you can see it brings it up right here in the top left. And what we're gonna do, grab this video file. So we only want the video, so we're gonna grab that video 
and drag it right on top of our timeline. Now we are gonna wanna have around 10 dots total in this animation. So we're gonna have to duplicate this layer. But before that, we wanna make sure that the dot layer is underneath the like buttons. So first, we're gonna go over here. We're just gonna right click on our tracks. We're gonna go add tracks. And then we're just gonna go to the video tracks and just crank this up to around 22. Click OK. Now you can see we have more tracks. If you just hold control, you can actually scroll up on your tracks. Since we don't need the audio, I'm just going to go right in between the video and audio and drag the audio down so we have more room for our video files. I'm just going to crank that down a bit. So you want to click on the black like button, hold shift and click on the white like button. And we're just going to drag it up all the way up to around 12. After we have both of those like buttons all the way up, we can start working on the dot layers. If you still have this source file up, you just got to go to the effects controls and you're back there. We want to make this animation clean. So we're going to go over to the right to the effects panel. And we're going to just drag another transform layer right on top of this dot image. So the first thing we're going to do is make this dot go right underneath the like button so it's hidden. So we're just gonna drag this position layer all the way down. So the position is 723 and 791. So we're gonna keyframe a position. We're gonna drag it a good 10 seconds of difference. And then we're just gonna play with the position. So first thing I'm gonna do is just move it all the way over here to around 410. So we're just gonna clean it up with some Bezier keyframes. We're gonna select both of those to temporal and go to bezier zoom in a bit click the arrow to open up position we're just going to go down and over and down and over we're just going to make it a little bit longer yes i think that's perfect next we want to add some opacity to this so we're just going to go all the way up on our fx controls we're going to click right here for this opacity keyframe we're going to drag our timeline i'd say but right here so it's pretty close to the finish of the position keyframe. And we're gonna just drag this opacity all the way down to zero or just do zero. So if we play that back, it's going a little too quickly in my opinion. So I'm just gonna select both of the opacity layers. I'm just gonna drag it out. And then we're gonna drag this second one in a little closer. And if we look at that, I'd say it looks pretty good. So we've done the hardest step. We've created that little dot animation. Now we can just duplicate that layer a bunch of times and just change the area where that dot appears. I'm just gonna hold Alt and select and grab that dot image, drag it up one, I'd say, and then just let go. And then you can see we created a duplicate layer. All we're gonna wanna do is change the position of this second dot image. So we're just gonna click on it. We're going to go down to the position. We're just going to drag it right on top of that second keyframe of the position. If you want to make sure that it's right on top, you can just grab this keyframe and make sure it snaps right on. So once you know that this is matched with the second keyframe, we can change the position of it. So I'm just going to go here and do 1000. So we're just going to keep doing these steps. We're going to hold alt and drag this layer up. Create another duplicate. I'm going to hold until it snaps on. And then we're just going to make it 710 and then 495. And then if we play that back again, you can see there is another one on top. Now, I think we're just going to create two more, one in between here and then one in between here. And then we should be good. So we're just going to keep doing these steps. We're going to hold alt and drag this layer up. So I'm just going to do it again. Make sure the keyframe is matched up. Click on the position, make it. 946 and 592 and then duplicate it once more make sure it's matched up and then finally we're just going to change this to 501 and then if we play this back you can see we have a quick little disperse of dots now to make this effect a little better we're going to duplicate all the dot images and delay them a little bit so we're going to have a second burst of dots so we're just going to select all of them we're going to hold alt and then grab all five images and then we're just going to drag them right on top of the previous ones move these selected layers two frames over use your arrow keys and then we're going to drag it right in front you can see it creates a second burst 
just a little bit delayed. You can barely even notice it, honestly. Now I do wanna make sure that these dots appear right in the middle of this click animation. So I'm just gonna actually move these dot images a little sooner. So if we play it, there we go. So we wanna make sure the dots appear as soon as it changes to a white like button. It just kinda of adds to the effect of clicking the like button. So if we play this animation back, oof, looks clean. So I'm just going to add to the effect a little bit and we're going to add some drop shadow so we can go to the effects panel. Just type in drop and then it should be under perspective. We're just going to drag drop shadow onto the black like button. I'm going to scroll down till we find it. So we're going to change the opacity to 100. I'm going to change the distance to 94. And we're going to beef that softness up to 113. Now we want to make sure that this drop shadow layer is on the black like button and the white like button. So a cool thing we can do is just click on the drop shadow icon. We're going to press control C and then we're going to go onto our white like button and we're just going to press on motion and control V. And then if you scroll down, you can see that the drop shadow was added. Now the final step is just adding some of the audio to make it more efficient and more effective. So the first thing we're going to do is find the longer whoosh. We're going to drag that file right to the beginning of our timeline. So we kind of want to match the very tip point of the whoosh. I'd say about here with the black like button. You can kind of just play with it. Just play it a couple of times and see if it matches with the whoosh. It does just kind of come down to personal preference. But I think that whoosh is pretty good. So we're going to move on to the clicking sound as if someone was clicking the light button right here. Grab the clicking sound, just drag it in and try to match it up as close as possible. So if we play that back, it looks beautiful. Now we're just going to add two more whooshes for the like button going up quickly and then going back down. We're going to grab the quick whoosh. We're going to drag it onto our timeline and just try to match it up. We are going to reduce this audio so you can see we can't really see the audio as much so if you go over here and you drag this down a little bit you can see the audio a little better so we're just going to drag this little line down a bit i'd say i'd say about that is good i'd say about 21.8 for this volume is good and then we're going to just add one more of the longer whoosh to finish it off make it so it lines up when it's going down if the audio file is a little too big you don't want to combine them with the other audio you can see how that cuts into the second one you can actually just grab right here you can see how there's an arrow pointing to the right hand side you can just grab and then drag it to whenever the audio actually starts just makes it a bit easier and then just kind of match it up it does take some time to figure out when the whoosh occurs, but playing it back a couple times, you should be able to get it pretty easily. So you can see we created a beautiful like animation. It goes up, does a little a boop for a clicking animation, and it goes back down. Now, if you guys want to save this as a transparent layer, I'll show you guys how to do that really quickly. First thing we got to do is actually delete this mountain layer because we want to make sure it's transparent. So I'm just going to delete that layer. And then if you play it back, it should just be a black screen with your like button animation. First thing we're going to do, make sure everything is all in order here. We're going to go up to file and we're going to go to export media. And this should pop up. So to make it transparent, I'm not sure why, but we're going to change the format to QuickTime. And then we're going to go to the preset and we're going to change this to the GoPro 12 bit with alpha at max bitrate depth. Where we're just going to click that and we're going to want to make sure the quality is at the very maximum. So you can see here under the video file, you can see basic video settings. We're going to crank this up to five. And then the only other thing we're going to need to do is go here to use maximum render quality. And we're going to click that. And if you want to change the output name and where the file goes, you can click right here and then you can change where it goes. And then you just have to press export. Let me know if you guys do have questions about this tutorial. I'll be happy to answer them in the comments below. But that's everything from me guys. Peace out.